Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Forward 6. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Lisa Martin. The theme of this conference is AI at work, and that, that's what we're talking about. Is what we're talking about. We've been having, one of the things I loved yesterday, and we're bringing some of the main stage from yesterday to you right now, is really looking at how customers, the voices of customers are really talking about how automation can just massively unleash, unleash potential. And we're going to be talking with the guy that led <laughs> off the conference exactly. right now. Uh, you're, you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> um, we're welcoming to the stage Dennis Liu. He is the CEO of Vital. Welcome, yes. Dennis. Thank you. And Mohammed Kadir, he is the section manager at uh, Vital. Vital. Yeah. Vital. Uh, senior section manager. And we just are, we call you Kid. That's your oh, nickname. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> right. Dennis, I'm going to start with you. Why don't yeah. you t start telling our viewers a little bit about Vital and what you do and wh wh what your company does. Thank you. I'm uh, from the Singapore government. We are a department doing shared services, pro processing uh, HR, payroll, finance, invoices, procurement shared services. In the Ministry of Finance in Singapore, we are about 500 strong. We serve more than 100,000 public employees and more than 100 Singapore government agencies. So our scope is large, and I only have 500 people doing all these things. So that's where we come from. We are actually both civil servants, public employees, yeah. and we are here, I'm very privileged, <laughs> at uh, Forward 6 uh, UI Path Conference, uh, learning about low-code automation and finding new ways uh, to take ourselves uh, forward and ahead uh, in terms of productivity, in terms of uh, doing better for our uh, public officers and for our country. So that's why we're here. Kid, give us a little bit of your thoughts on, you know, one of the things we talked a lot about yesterday is that, that automation is, it's more than productivity gains. It's really about empowering people. You talked about, Dennis, 100,000 people that you're empowering. Kid, talk a little bit about that, and then Dennis, weigh in on your thoughts about how it's just more than productivity gains, that people empowerment is really critical. Absolutely, Lisa. So, um, I am a graduate of uh, Human Resource Management and Business. So when I joined Vital more than 10 years back, I, was, I started off as a Human Resource Officer. Makes sense, right? But now I'm doing automation in the OpStack role, and I am enjoying it. So what happened? Uh, first, maybe I actually go through my journey with you uh, on how I was empowered at work to make this transition. So when I was in the Human Resource um, Operations, uh, automation solution, even the simple ones, are being appreciated by my coworkers and bosses alike. Um, back then, I was just using simple Excel formulas and VBA macros um, and to, to do some sort of automation. And even this simple automation is being well received by my coworker, right? Because it actually helped them in their work. And uh, this I actually encouraged and actually uh, and supported by our bosses. Yeah, perhaps maybe I'll tell you a story on how supportive the bosses are, right? <laughs> so back then I was trying to learn about the VBA macro. So I was trying to find work causes on uh, VBA macros. However, it was all full, right? So when my director actually learned about this, she approached me saying that, hey, actually I got um, uh, a course uh, that she's attending, coming up soon. So she told me, why not I replace her, uh, you know, take, take her slot, <laughs> right? So that's how supportive they are. Um, so anyways, um, the uh, culture of innovation from the bottom up is well nested and vital. Um, so, um, however, I mean, who, who else will actually know about the tedious, painstaking work rather than the ground folks ourselves, right? Yeah, so however, when you actually use uh, VBA macro for automation, you quickly realize the limitation of it, uh, which is uh, it's pretty much limited to your uh, coding skills. Uh, hence, when Vital actually start training us for uh, citizen developer course, right, using um, uh, low-code automation tools, such as UiPath, uh, SudoX, uh, it was really a game changer, right? I was thinking, I, I was thinking to myself, wow, wow, this is so easy to now <laughs> automate uh, my, 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 my stuff, my, my work, right? So each of us that actually went through the course uh, need, needed to develop a script by ourselves, so did I, and I actually continued on developing more scripts uh, that help with my work process. Basically, I'm employing more bots to do my work, by getting paid the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like what Rob Got said yesterday. Figured it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, so like what Rob said yesterday in the keynote, uh, working smarter, not harder, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's my journey. Yeah. So yeah. I, maybe I, I jump in to, to thank Kit for his loyalty to, to Vital. I mean, I'm an organization that experiences fairly high turnover for a government space. I mean, we hit 17% over a couple of years, so it's coming back down now. And Kit has been with us more than 10 years, right? Yeah. Uh, but in, a, but in a, a positive compliment for Kit with 
during the time he's been with us, he joined us as an executive. Today he's risen the ranks yep. all the way to a senior section manager. Along the way, he, had, he has had multiple promotions and more importantly, a rise in job scope. Because today, I brought Kit along together with another colleague, uh, Ms. Fahana, because they're both citizen developers. And Kit is now a citizen developer supervising citizen developers. And there's yeah. magic in that, right? Because all of them know this low-code automation, which is one thing, but their starting point was um, business operations. They are the ones that felt the pain on the ground. Right. <laughs> really painful. I always feel very blessed when I supervise their work and read their reports because I myself would never want to do that, right? <laughs> but <laughs> as the boss, he talked about bottom-up. I need to do what we call a top-down approach. So it's a top-down, bottom-up together. So the top-down approach, if you allow me a bit of time to elaborate it, is actually quite simple when you think about it. We need to figure out how to empower and equip our people. Now in Singapore, we face labor constraints and labor shortages. My bosses, to their credit, are happy to invest in technology, but even if I wanted to hire another 500 or 1,000 people, I just cannot find them. So what do I do? So I have to look for solutions, technological solutions that allow us to augment augment, put our people at the center and augment their capabilities even better so that they can grow in their jobs, do more, and over time, grow, grow in their roles, right? Yeah. Grow in their roles, get promoted, and be far, far more productive. I, I think that is the essence of our uh, journey so far. And we're very appreciative for low-code automation, including companies like UiPath that provide us with the platforms uh, for my staff to open up uh, the journey. And if I may add in, because uh, inspiration by talking to some executives yesterday, sharing my vital story and listening to their stories, I think one thing that Vital does slightly ahead or different from the rest is we are using the technology to reframe our role and reframe our work. So the whole idea is we were traditional backroom operations, manual, tedious, and over time, I always wondered my staff would come, work a few years, get burnt out and leave. <laughs> right? That's a Traditional real concern. Manner. Yeah, it's a real yeah, concern, right? Yeah. How do you create and reframe your work such that ideally, as more money work comes to us, we get energized, we get empowered, and we want to do more. Yeah. So the key enabler is this local automation. When you think about it, why is that so? Because now, when I throw Kit and the team a challenge, I don't tell them, please use brute force, work 24-7 and get the output out tomorrow because my service client, my service partner, ministry ABC, this is, says this is very urgent, I need it now, right? In the past, they would have to work through the night to, to get it done. Yep. Now, what does Kit do? Maybe I will just turn to him and she can share more about the levels of automation that his team comes. And yep. really, they're classified into three levels. That's the thinking. There's individual level automation, there's team level automation, there's enterprise level automation, and everything is really being looked at uh, by the citizen developers themselves with support from management. So if you don't mind, I could ask you to elaborate a little bit on the three levels sure, of automation. Sure, sure, sure. sure Denise. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basic, um, yeah, what, what he mentioned about the three levels, so maybe I will um, share with you on my scripts I developed on these three levels, right? The first one is individual level, right? So it's about my work. Uh, so it's pretty much simple. So monthly, I actually need to do um, uh, refresh the dashboard and then provide my bosses. It's pretty mundane, right? So I actually developed a script to help me with that. Yeah. So the script will actually navigate to my case management system. I will generate the reports and then basically open the dashboard to refresh the data with the uh, latest report. And then it will actually notify my bosses. Uh, so pretty simple, but it actually helps. Uh, second level uh, is uh, teams level. So for the human resource and payroll teams, uh, for one of the process, they actually need to generate multiple um, HR uh, reports from the ERP. So what I actually scripted for them is uh, for the uh, bot to actually navigate through the ERP system and then actually generate the different reports they actually need. And then the bot will then basically perform some data manipulation, data wrangling to get the outcome that they want and then uh, shared in the shared platform before notifying the team that it's done, right? Again, it's very simple, but it works. It <laughs> works, yeah. So lastly, it's uh, in, in, more interesting. It's got to do with enterprise level. You're talking about organization-wide, vital-wide level. Uh, so for this board, I, um, what I did was to uh, bridge the system gap of our vendor ticket management system, 
right? Tickets here referring to the issue logs. For example, if vital staff actually encounter a system issue, right, they will actually log a ticket to the vendor, right? So then the vendor will actually um, update in their ticket management system uh, of that ticket. However, this ticket management system that, uh, is only accessible by them. So problem will come when they actually updated in their ticket management system that is pending for vital staff action. However, vital staff is not aware of that. It will lead to there's, uh, a, gap. there's, there's a, gap. a gap. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Yeah, it will lead to um, uh, longer uh, resolution times and of course innovations of operations. So my solution is uh, for the vendor to um, basically take the ticket listing from their own system and then give it to us and then the script will actually take over from there. It will do the mapping, the manipulation and then actually email to each and every single vital staff of their tickets, tickets that is pending for their actions. Yeah, and of course they also give a consolidated listing to the bosses for their reference. And then to end it off, is, uh, I created a shared platform whereby the vital staff can actually report inaccurate uh, ticket status. Right, and then this will actually go back to the vendor. So it completes the feedback loop. Hence, this whole solution actually uh, bridged the gap uh, of uh, our vendor's ticketing system. I I'm just so proud to, to bring Kit to tell you these stories because there's no way I can tell them, number one. Yeah. And number two, imagine the value he has created Absolutely. for his team. Yeah. Yes. It goes beyond, thanks for that, and it goes beyond the so-called productivity man hours and savings. He's actually using low-code automation tools. He and his team he and his team at the enterprise level to build entire refined systems of engagement, if you yeah. think about it, right? System of engagement that, that level upon or that ride upon traditional ERP systems that all of us use. I don't have to mention their names, we know who they are, yeah. but everyone is, you know, has used these systems. Yeah. But we all know that those systems can be clunky, can be difficult, and every time you put up a change request, it almost never happens because it's too expensive or the pro IT developers have no time. Yeah. So coming back to what was talked in a conference yesterday, I think there was some um, what ifs question on stage. What if your whole organization were IT developers? I almost wanted to stand up and say, that was my promise to my bosses. I said, <laughs> my whole organization, the 500 of them, will be low-code, no-code citizen developers, while I have, a, I have an IT team. There are only about 12. They will focus on what is the very technical stuff that only the IT experts can do are equipped to do. For example, cybersecurity, technical infrastructure, and all these really incredibly difficult stuff that you know, need to go to college to get a four-year degree or a six-year master's, whatever to do. But the rest of us, 500, you heard from Kit himself, come from non-technical backgrounds yeah. with the training, with the opportunities to co-create and learning from uh, the likes of uh, other customers and uh, the experts at UiPath. They can build, they can build they can make magic happen. So your excitement and optimism about the, the potential yeah. of citizen developers is so evident, and, I, and there's so many dimensions to this That's story right. because of what it's enabled Kid to do with his team, what it's enabling the enterprise to get done, and leading people to, I'm imagining, having more job satisfaction oh, yes. Um, yes. And, yes. and more time to, to work on things that are actually meaningful yes. and creative tasks rather yes. than having to do yes. the boring, mundane things, which then will, will impact retention uh, for you. Yes. 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 But, I, but I, what I, what I want it, I don't want to throw water on it, throw cold water on yeah. it, but I want to ask what are the potential risks here? And, and are you, because I'd imagine there are things that you have to consider when you have yes. non-technical people yes. doing technical things. Absolutely. There is some governance, maybe yes. inconsistent standards. Yes. So how do you overcome those challenges yes. and how do you think about yes. them? So, so I would say these were questions that were thrown at us Right from the get-go. Yeah, right. Um, we started with local automation, playing around with it as early as 2017, 2018. And at the start, it was all about attendant automation, small scale, yeah. because of this risk issue. Fast forward to today, fast forward for today, and using the, the um, framework that Kit has um, elaborated, right? At the enterprise level, we put in place controls and governance where we look at the automation, the bots, the impactful ones, we draw a line to say that those that have above a certain impact and risk, like his, that yeah. go around various yeah. systems, after his team has built it, he leads a center of excellence team in an operations business division. They bring the entire script to a center of excellence, 
in the center, which reports to me actually, <laughs> we call it an innovation hub, right. and we scrub through the requirements, the documentation. So you're the humans in the loop. Yes, yeah. we are the humans in the loop. Yeah. The, the documentation, and most recently, we even got audited by our colleagues at the Auditor General's Office uh, and the Accountant General's Office, our internal auditors, to come in to take a look at our frameworks to make sure that all the documentation is correct, number one. Number two is, you can imagine in the government, especially where security and confidentiality is so important, when we roll out these technologies, right, the IT security side of the house will want to make sure that every step, everything that a bot does has a trail, has an audit trail. So all that we do within our systems are completely right. compliant with that. Human in the loop is so important because at a citizen developer level, every bot is tied to a human being. So we know exactly who did what, especially for the attended bots. So my PA, my personal executive, not only does she serve two bosses, myself and my deputy, she builds bots all the time. But all the bots are tied to her. So you, when you look at system logs, it looks as if she's doing all the work. Correct. But it's an extension of her, the human in the loop. For the unattended automation, where we push up at the enterprise level, then there's this whole pretty rigorous structure of ensuring that they're all exactly. scrubbed, tested, and checked all the time. So we have the frameworks to monitor them. I get a wonderful uh, chart to show me all the right. different bots running, how many of them failed and why. This is a short answer to your question. It takes a while, but we have figured it out and we're pushing it hard. Uh, be, and, and the thing is this, right? I've heard again this morning uh, feedback that how, how does Vital manage this pushback from say, traditional IT? There is this not so nice word that sometimes people call citizen developers, and I'll say it out there, they call us shadow IT, yeah. right? But the good thing is, I don't think we should be looking at who is in the light and who is in the dark, right? We're all working together to achieve a common outcome. The fact of the matter is, IT resources are extremely scarce around the world, not just in Singapore. I have 12. Even if I get a budget to hire 24, and even if I can hire 24 or yeah. 30, they can't do everything that the 500 could possibly do. Yeah. So it's about working together, ensuring and agreeing on all the security protocols, which is you know, a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. But after that, deciding what segment of the work, who does what. Yeah. And the IT, I found that the IT people I work with are very appreciative that the business users themselves um, take on this. Because in the past, you will write system requirements, send it to the IT guy, the IT doesn't understand what he wants. <laughs> So now he builds it. <laughs> Dennis, right. my last question for you, and, sure. and maybe Kid, you Kid. can comment on this as well, is your advice, your recommendations, you've probably gotten to speak with a lot of UiPath customers in the last day and a half here, but what does it take for an organization like Vital to really embrace automation and AI? I imagine there's a cultural component there. Yes, yes. I think the starting point first as a leader is I have to make sure that I find the correct tools to think about how to bring the organization forward. So you look at it from the top down and bottom up. I think top down, uh, I would say I've gotten all the inspiration talking around the world. I mean, there are different um, platforms out there that we all can use. What I would say special about Vital and where I'm, I'm very happy with and I'm very um, privileged to have staff like Kit, and I don't have just one staff like Kit, there are many others like him growing up, is the belief in your people, in that your people can do it. Yeah. The belief that your people can embrace this automation, reframe the way they think, reframe the job, put in the extra effort, and let me put it this way, they've been talking about four day week, I was thinking, that's a luxury, <laughs> four day week. But right. we want to put in our good yeah. five and five and a half day weeks and earn a decent salary. Yeah. And the only way to earn a decent salary or to see wage growth in this age is to see productivity growth productivity growth. So with great success stories like coming from Kate and I invite him to uh, share what he thinks about the audacious target I've set for them. I told them recently a few months ago at my town hall that I want and hope to see a 10x productivity gain. Wow. 10x. Wow. <laughs> and I think all of them fell off <clears throat> the chair. It's like, because when I say that in my mind, if we, if, if we have achieved, if we can achieve 5x, that would be great. But let's go for 10. Yeah. This looks better, right? <laughs> yes. And and fast forward to today, and let me talk a bit about AI. All the product releases in recent times, uh, and how, say, UiPath is also using generative AI to build it around the human, yeah. convinces me that what I'm thinking is correct. You think about it, right? Because with generative AI, uh, citizen developers can script faster, yeah. can use StudioX more, more quickly, because now it's able to 
generate ideas and the prompts and even do the first draft. In the past, you have been taken, the same logic applies. In the past, you might have been taken 10 hours to come up with a complex automation. Once we get our hands on these new tools, yeah. you may take half an hour. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So he'll be coming to ask me for a raise. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be thinking maybe I'll just put you in charge of more citizen developers. <laughs> so that's, that's why we are so bullish about this and that's why we think uh, uh, it's such a great revolution. Don't just focus on the traditional IT and highly skilled staff, but focus on your whole population at large. Give them a chance. Um, train them. Yeah. I'm training my entire vital. By the end of uh, next year, 100% will be trained in RPA uh, technologies. It's a whole organization. And give them a chance, give them a chance to upskill and to learn and to use their skills. And I think if I ask Kit uh, what he thinks of looking forward, what he's excited about, maybe we can hear from Kit. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, maybe I come in in uh, the bottom-up approach, right? Bottom-up approach in a story, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, in a story. Yeah. So uh, the story is how my offset team. Uh, is what they are right now, right? Mm. So uh, currently my offset thing is generating uh, automated solution after solutions every single day. But do you know that uh, several years back, they are actually um, came in, coming from operations, doing the daily, day-to-day uh, -day human resource processes. They also, some of them are actually doing payroll processes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and then all of them do not have any IT or programming related background, right? So, um, in a sense, they are actually the earliest citizen developers of Vital. Um, so what make them change? Uh, so on top of the uh, top-down approach, which uh, uh, my CEO actually mentioned, uh, there are certain common traits among the specialists, which I, uh, you can actually consider them as a bottom-up approach. Um, I can summarize here. So the first one is actually they got interest in technology. So they are actually aware uh, very early up that how, what, what automation can actually do uh, to help with their work. Right. Secondly, is they have this desire to actually help themselves and their co-workers on uh, using technology for their work, right, to make work better. Lastly, which I think is the most important one, is um, like what they say, every great journey begins with a single step, right? So several years back, all of them actually took the bold first step to automate something. <laughs> uh, there is uh, there your work process. Uh, with all the you know the uh, safety net assured by the bosses, the training and the tools provided, and then it kind of snowballed from there. You know they got projects after projects, and the uh, skills just developed further and further. So a few years back, they um, uh, the function decided to uh, combine all of them together and make Obstack uh, team. Yeah, That's inspiring. Thank you so <laughs> yeah. much. What yeah. a great yeah. story. Yeah. So if I may just summarize in two phrases, the beliefs I have would be all my wonderful and capable citizen developers, the pattern to their background is there's no pattern. Yeah. You need to give everybody a chance, whichever background they come from. And two is, think about it, with all this uh, talk about inequality in the world, talk about digital divide in the world, by doing all this, we will not let the digital divide become a social divide. Right. In fact, the digital tools today can bring society's teams and workers together to, to do more. That's great advice. And, and that to me is what drives me to come to work every day and what, what, why we bring a uh, kid to share our story to the world. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, Dennis and Mohammed, uh, kid, sorry, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A really fun thank and interesting conversation. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Lisa Martin. We'll be more with the Cube's back, with, back, back with more of theCUBE's live coverage of Forward Six. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Mm -hmm.